So we're here with uh, Owen James, author of the book, Redeemable, uh, currently columnist for The Guardian. I'll uh, just ask him a few questions for, thank you for joining us, Owen, My pleasure. Uh, for LMH Conversations. Mm -hmm. Following on from your discussion with uh, Alan Rusbridge earlier, I suppose we just wanted to talk a little bit about your background. Um, obviously, you had a troubled upbringing, uh, a few misdeeds in the past, and now you're sort of on a different path, uh, working, obviously, as a writer. And in that field, and you've achieved some success now, and I suppose the first question I'd like to ask is uh, how you feel about your past now. And I know we've talked a lot about redemption, and if you think redemption is possible. Two questions. Then. Yeah, it's so, a two-part question. Well, so firstly, I, I think, you know, think about my past. It's very odd for me to think about my past now, as if, because I wonder sometimes, I know people who live the way I lived in the past, and I think, how do you live like that? How does anyone live on the streets, no money, no purpose, no focus, no direction, no meaning. You know, how do people live like that? But there are thousands of people, maybe even a million people that live in our country on the edges of society who don't have purpose and meaning. You know, they're scratching along like, like I did. And I think, how do you live like that? When I was in that life, I used to th look at people like yourself, young fellows like yourself, you know, nice people like we've got here, and think, well, I'd like to live like that. How do you... How do you get to live yeah. like that? Now I live that, an ordinary life, and I couldn't imagine living the way I lived before. I mean, bear in mind, I used to live rough. Yeah, I mean, sleep rough behind the Guardian building in Farringdon Road, like just yards away, Leather Lane, 35, 33 years ago. I was, I was just a drunk, dangerous tramp behind the Guardian building. Now I walk into the Guardian building, and I'm welcomed as a, yeah. as a, as a colleague and a writer. So... You know, if you, if you say to me about my past, it's very hard for me to articulate how I feel about that past because it's just nothing like I can imagine. But I'm still the same, still me. Yeah. I'm responsible for the past. And, and then, you know. if I stop you there, yeah. so obviously being convicted of uh, two murders, yeah. and then going on to the second part of the question, do you believe that redemption is something that's possible for you and for other people? For me. In, or for you and for other people in For other people, I think it's possible. For me, I don't think it probably, it probably never is. You know? yeah. I, I, it's not something I... You know, Joan said to me, the lady in my book said, mm. I was redeemable. Yeah. Now that's not, she didn't say I'm redeemed, mm. I'm, I'm, I'm reborn. No, she said, you're redeemable. The fact that I came back from France myself and handed myself in, yeah. on my own accord, you know, yeah. nobody forced me to do that. I could have, I could have been running for years, I could have, just, yeah. I could have disappeared to Africa. But I, but I came back, made me feel that maybe there was something about me that was salvageable. And then she told me I was redeemable. Yeah. And that was enough to hook me on to think, well, maybe I can live okay. again. And then, obviously, being a student interview, from a student's point of view, I guess we'd like to know if you could give a piece of advice to young people today. It's a bit of a cliched question, but if you could give one piece of advice to young people today, I'm not an what advice that would giver. Be? I'm not an advice giver, but I'll tell you this. When I was in jail, I didn't realize that I, when I was like, studying and doing my homework in my cell and just trying to figure out how, you know, who I was and everything, I was actually preparing for opportunity. Mm -hmm. I had no idea I was doing that. I was just working hard, trying to live a better life. And then opportunity came 15 years in when I got a chance to write for the Guardian newspaper. I could, nobody could see that coming. Yeah. Opportunity comes to everybody. Everybody in life, opportunity will come. If you're not prepared for it, it'll pass you by. Mm -hmm. If I hadn't been prepared, I was the guy that could write a good letter. I was getting involved in writing groups. I was doing prison magazines. Writing was my thing. And then this out of the blue, unbelievable opportunity came. Would you like to write for the Guardian newspaper? Of all people that came to me, I was ready for it. I'd been preparing for 15 years yeah. without realizing it. That's what I would say. Yeah. Always remember, when you're studying, when you're working towards a future, you're preparing for opportunity because it will come. And if you're not ready, it will pass you by. Yeah. Well, I think we're low on time, so we'll stop it there. But Thank you very much for coming down and obviously taking time to speak to me and with Alan. Pleasure. It's been an absolute pleasure to have you here and uh, the book redeemable. Very excited to get that. That's very kind of you. Thank you very much All for right, coming Jack, down. Good to meet you, Paul. Cheers. Thanks okay. a lot. Okay.